So let us say a few more words about what exactly is a variable and how is it different from a value. To make programs useful, we have to be able to store values in memory. These values can be numbers, they can be strings, they can be booleans. And then we have to be able to access them back and get them at some stage in the future. And this is where variables come in. These values would be associated with names of variables, which we can then use to retrieve them as they're needed. So there is this direct relationship between a name of a variable that we use, shown here on the left-hand side, and a value shown on the right-hand side. Notice that there is some terminology here. So sometimes we would refer to this name component as a name. Sometimes we would refer to it as a label. Sometimes we would refer to it as an identifier. The value tends to be called a value. But notice that there is a relationship between a place in memory which we are labeling by assigning it a name and then the value which would tend to go there. So in human readable code, if we have something like let num1 equals to 40, num1 would be the variable in this case. So num1 would be the name that we would use to refer to the value which would be stored at that location. And then 40 would be the value which would be stored and associated with that variable. We also have to remember that in machine code, things are different. We don't use names to refer to memory locations. We use simply addresses. So we use numbers, which refer to a given location in memory. And then the value itself would be represented by a given numbers of zeros and ones, depending on the value type. So we do have to be aware that there is an association between the name given in our human readable code and an address in memory. There is a direct relationship between them. And in fact, as far as the machine code is concerned, these names are not even there. They're only using the addresses to do what they need to do. And then the value in our human readable code, for example, of the number 40, and the space in memory associated with that address, the zeros and ones which would occupy the definition of that value in memory. So how do we declare variables in JavaScript? We have a couple of ways of doing it. We can use a let keyword or we can use a var keyword. We would only be focusing on the let keyword for now to keep things simple. But before we start talking about syntax, let us again make sure that we fully understand what a variable is. So on the right hand side, we, ha we have a shelf, a space in memory. We have labeled that shelf, so we have a name which is identifying that space in memory. We have a value and then we place that value at that shelf location. So now we have a value and we have a way of getting it, finding it and retrieving it if it's needed. But the key thing about a variable is that every time we define a variable, for example, with the let keyword, we are in fact allowed to change values of that variable. So if we were to, for example, introduce a yellow ball and place it at the same location, it is going to replace the red ball that is in fact allowed. If we are to introduce a green ball, it would be allowed to replace the yellow ball. So notice that we can recycle the same location in memory and add different values there with each new value successively removing and replacing what was there before. Now this would be contrasted with something called a constant, which we will be discussing in just a little bit, which doesn't allow to do that. So if we use a constant, once we define a constant, we are no longer allowed to change it. But let us keep to variables now. So the main ways in this course in which we would be, in which we would be defining variables would be using the let keyword. So in this case, we have the let keyword followed by an identifier, num1 in this case, followed by an assignment operator, followed by a value, the numerical value 40, followed by a semicolon. This is the most typical way of defining a variable in JavaScript. This is one of the most simplest programs you can in fact write. So what you've done in this case is you have identified a name which we would use as a variable. 
you have assigned a value to it, the value 40, and then you have something which you can retrieve later. If we want to make things a bit more general, we have a let keyword for, followed by an identifier, followed by an assignment operator, followed by a value. Technically, instead of value, you can substitute an expression at that location. So all expressions result in a value. We are not talking about expressions just yet. So let us just for now, for simplicity sake, just think of a simple value which goes on top of a shelf. Now I did mention that there is another way of defining values using the var keyword. So we can have a var identifier assignment operator value. We will be discussing this a bit later on in the course just for simplicity sake, but be aware that there is a second way of defining variables in JavaScript. Now that we discussed what variables are, let us discuss what a constant is. As we did previously, before we go into syntax, let us visually understand what a constant does and how it is different from a variable. Now in this case, we have already defined the variable that we defined in the previous example. So we have something called variable name, which is the name that we have given to a shelf which has a particular value on it. Now what we will do now is we will define a second shelf, a second place in memory. This time around we will define this shelf as a constant. So we would use the name const name to refer to it. And what we can do now is we can also place a value at that location. Now this step is identical to what we were doing before with the variable names. But here comes the change. If we use a constant, we are not allowed to make changes to that value after the first assignment. You can think of this as placing a cage around that ball. So we have define a value, which refers to that particular location, but we are not allowed to make changes anymore to it. So in fact, if we try to assign a new value to constant name, we would get an error. We are not allowed to do that. So if we want to define variables, we would use the let and the var keyword. But if we want to define a constant, we would use the const keyword. So a constant address can be assigned a value only once. That is kind of the idea. In terms of syntax, the syntax is very similar to what we were doing with let and with var. We have a const keyword followed by an identifier followed by an assignment operator, followed by a value, as I mentioned before. There can also be an expression at this location which evaluates to a value. 